All right. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go straight to um, the repo. I'll post this link to the simulation repo that we'll be using. Um, I think I forgot to edit in the lab handout. Um, so basically, I'll directly go through the README and then. Um, follow along on how to start it up and how to develop in it. Um, if you have any questions, stop me anytime. Um, okay, so this is the repo for the simulation environment that we'll be using this year. Um, it's basically a gym environment um, that we have for the car, and I've made a uh, made it compatible with ROS two. Um, you can develop. All the topics are available in ROS2. You can um, receive information, you can publish information, and then it's going to be visualized in Arvis. So <clears throat> the installation guide is basically split up into two um, sections. So one is that if you have an NVIDIA GPU and if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU on your machine, um, the, the simulation doesn't really use GPU to calculate anything. Um, it's mostly for visualization through uh, GUI. So if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, uh, the, the GUI forwarding is done in a browser. <clears throat> so the first step, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, um, if you're on Linux, then you do, uh, most of you should already have Docker. Um, so what you'll do is you find the NVIDIA Docker utilities here. Basically, it's a toolkit which, um, once you install it and everything, you have the right drivers. Um, it will allow you to basically use your GPU inside a container. Um, <clears throat> and then if you are on Windows, um, you'll have to use Windows subsystems for Linux um, if you wish to basically have a straightforward GUI forwarding. So there are guides to basically um, set up CUDA on WSL um, and then set up Docker. And then basically there's a guide on how you can, um, how you can, how you can make uh, an NVIDIA GPU work on a Windows machine inside your Docker, Docker containers. Um, and then the last one is called Rocker. It's not a typo, it, it is Rocker. Um, <clears throat> so this is a tool developed by, um, you can you can look through the documentation for those later on. So this is basically a tool de developed by OSRF. Um, it allows you to run Docker images with with different customization and it will inject, it to, uh, inject into Docker commands for you. And we mainly use it for GUI forwarding. So it, in, the, in the repo, it's, uh, they assume that you have an uh, Ubuntu system. So if you're already on WSL, which you'll have to do if you're on Windows and you want to use the GPU, it should al also be compatible. Um, <clears throat> and then after you're done with the dependencies for this part, you can what you can do to start up this simulation is basically clone this repo. Um, again, I will um, send this link on Piazza. And I'll probably share So in, I'll, I'll basically walk this along uh, as I go. Um, so the first step you do is that you go into the repo uh, directory. And what you'll do is basically you build the, um, you build the uh, Docker file for the repo. So we haven't done this in the first one. So in this time you'll get to, if you're interested, you can look inside and see what the Docker file has. And this step basically builds a new um, Docker image based on the Docker file we've provided. Um, so as it runs, I'll keep going in the instructions. So when you um, finish building, we will also again mount a mount the current repo into as a package into the container that we're running. Um, so for example, this is the command. Um, if you have a GPU and you're using Rocker, this is what you can do to uh, basically start uh, a container. So as you see the, I, I, I can explain some of these 
uh, options. So the dash dash NVIDIA uh, tells the tells uh, Rocker that we're using the GPU, and X11 is basically telling that we're forwarding the display. Um, <clears throat> and the dash dash volume is basically we're mounting the current directory to uh, this directory in the container. And the, the thing about Rocker is that after you're done with your options, you have to have two just uh, free floating dash dash so that it separates um, all the options you have and the other arguments that we'll have in the future. So this is the name for the image that we'll be using. So I'll run this. So you see that it does its own uh, injection thing. It basically builds a new image. As you can see, this is a much longer command that it actually ran. Um, so now that we're inside a container, I could basically, where I landed is basically a workspace and then if we go into here, you have the simulation package. So the simulation, this entire repo is basically a ROS2 package. Um, so basically what you'll do then is, uh, so uh, let me just go through the whole thing. First step is called Cocon build, and then you source the, uh, set up that bash and then i've created a launch file for this hmm. ah. Hold on a second let me launch and then what you could do is Plus two launch gym bridge launch stop. Oh. So, so source the underlay. There we go. So that's the launch file that will launch Arviz and also the simulation. Um, so you'll see in the beginning, it's having a hard time finding all the frames. It will throw these warnings. But once you see the laser scan turns uh, with color and you see the 3D model, it should be working. And I'll go after, uh, I'll go, on, go to details on how to use the tools in here that's available and what the topics are later on. Okay, so let me exit the container. That was the first way to basically run it. As you can see, it just popped up on my screen, but it was inside the container. So the GPU was used to uh, forward the uh, forward the GUI interface. Um, and then if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, um, we'll be using something called no VNC. Uh, so it basically forwards through a web browser and then it'll show you a very, very basic GUI um, but it will still show the same Arvis window. Um, again, you'll need Docker. And also we'll be using Docker Compose, but I think there might, so, so uh, depending on the version of Docker you installed, it might already come with Docker when you install it, or you might have to go through the installation uh, again. But yeah, just follow those guides there and then see if you need it. And again, you can clone the repo and then build the image. This is exactly the same command as before. Um, <clears throat> so here I'll explain the Docker Compose file a little bit. So you'll see Docker Compose uses something called Docker Compose.yaml. So this is basically a configuration file to show uh, how, what containers you want to bring and what, what basically what configurations you want them to be in. So I've defined two here. Um, if you're using this way and you want to create a new container, you could also add your own. So in the first one is the sim container. It uses the image that we just built. And then the volume argument allows you to do the mounting. Um, and then environment, basically you set the environment, envir uh, uh, environment variables. So this is just for uh, forwarding. And network basically it puts the container on the network. So we've put it, we created a network called X11 here. And then we just put the forwarding container and the SIM container on the same network. Um, and then these are basically saying that, oh, we should, this is basically equivalent to the dash ID, IT argument that we used. Um, 
Uh, and for this part here, you this is basically, you don't have to touch this. This is for no VNC. Um, okay, let me go back to the instructions. So what we do here is we call Docker compose up. So this will build the containers if it's not built and then um, it will also bring up both the containers. So as you see, um, it's basically starting these two containers. I've already had it before, so it's recreating. And this is the name for the container. Um, so I'll keep it here. And then as you can see, we don't actually have a bash session inside the sim container. So what I'll do is um, I'll open up a new terminal. Um, and then I think most of you have used this already. This basically allows you to open a interactive bash in the running in the running container. So as before, um, we source these and then let me just launch. The same launch file that we created. Uh, let me set this aside. And then you, in, in a browser, you can navigate to uh, this. It's on your local host. And what you see here is a, the no VNC interface. You basically click connect. And then in here, you, you, you won't see anything else, but it will have this Arvis window once you run, run it. So it's the same exact window, but in a browser window. Um, and also the uh, interactive options should still work. Okay, so you see as I killed it, it's gone. Um, so basically those are the two ways. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you'll have to use no VNC to see the GUI. Um, all right, let me go back to launching this simulation. So we uh, went through this exactly, basically source your overlays and underlays, and then you launch um, this launch file from the package and the Arvis window should show up. Um, if you, again, if you need another session in the same container, you could always use TMUTs or screen, whatever you like. Um, so one thing that I wanna mention is you can basically configure the simulation to do different things. So, <clears throat> One of the things that you can find in the, basically in the config directory uh, inside this uh, package is a YAML file for configurations. Um, these topic names uh, do not change these and the distance, distance to base link do not change these. Um, and then the, the, the scan parameters, you also shouldn't change the, these. Uh, as you can see, the scan FOV is actually in radians. Uh, 10, 1080 beams. Um, so basically everything above don't change them. And what you could change is uh, map parameters. So this, okay, maybe I should show this side by side. So what you'll see here, we uh, this is basically the path to the map inside the container. Um, if you remember, we call it the sim workspace and the package is this. And then in here we have maps. So uh, I've included basically the map for Levine second floor. Um, it's, it's very simple, it's a bit math. And then uh, Ross will interpret it as an occupancy grid. Um, so the path here you put is without extension. So for basically for Ross, if you want to serve a map on the, on the map server, you'll need a YAML file defining the name, the resolution, where the origin is on the map, um, and also an image file. So that's why I left the, so this assume, assumes that your map has two files. It's a one image file, one YAML file, and it's in the same directory. Uh, with the same name, but different extensions. And then you also have the map image extension, which is the PNG here that you can change. Um, another thing that you'll not use right now, but you'll you probably use it later on in the second half of the semester 
you can actually have two uh, agents in the same map and then they'll have separate uh, topics to publish to and then you can create basically create fake opponents uh, when you need to run multi-car stuff. <clears throat> um, and then these two are, um, this one is basically setting where the car will start when you launch the simulation on the map. Uh, this is in the world frame. Uh, so it's X, Y, and then the heading angle. And the opponents, the same thing for the opponent, but it's not used right now since there's only one agent. Um, and the last one is whether you want to enable keyboard teleop or not. So it's set to true now. Um, let me go back to the readme. So we've talked about uh, where the YAML is, what's, what fields are in there, what you could do to um, basically configure this. Um, and then next we'll go through the topics published by the simulation. Um, so if I launch the simulation again, uh, actually. So this is uh, running one car. Um, and basically in single agent mode, you'll see uh, the scan is the topic where you'll subscribe to, to get the Eagle agents laser scan. Um, you can also see what's in there. So, so basically it's, um, what Rahul described before, you'll, you'll have a header with the timestamp and the frame ID. You have the uh, angle min, angle max, angle increment. These are all in radians. Um, you have the range min and max, and then you have uh, the actual measurement array. Um, yeah, so that's the scan topic. You also have the uh, odometry. So this will give you, let's also echo that. So it's, uh, let me make this bigger so I can show all of them. So you see there's two fields. Uh, one is pose, this is basically your position and the orientation. So right now, uh, so the, the position is X, Y, Z. So Z will be zero because our simulation is 2D. Um, X and Y are um, basically the uh, world in the world frame. And for the orientation, this is in quaternion. So uh, with a zero heading angle, it's zero, 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 one. Um, and then you also have covariance, which is basically a way to model the uncertainty, but we don't use it in the simulation. So you get the ground truth. Uh, the twist measures basically the um, velocity of the velocity of uh, the Eagle agent here. Uh, the only field that you would be using, I think is the twist.twist.linear.x, which is the longitudinal, um, longitudinal velocity in the car's x axis so the velocity forwards um because because we don't really have a whole uh what's the word holonomic robot so you won't really have a velocity along the y-axis of the of the of the car um and then angular i th i have to double check but i think we have the z which is the angle rate the yaw rate of the vehicle, but um, you shouldn't be needing those. The most important one is the longitudinal velocity uh, forward. Um, and you also have the map topic, which is a map of the environment, but you, I don't think you'll use it in this lab. Um, and then there's a TF tree maintained. We'll talk about what, what that actually is in the next lecture. Um, that's all you need for this lab. And then if you, if you, when you start to have two agents, you can look at 
the other ones. So what the um, Uh, what the simulation subscribe to is a drive message, uh, uh, an Ackerman drive stamped message on the drive topic. So uh, you'll see it here. It's already subscribing to that. Um, when you need to drive the car, you just publish to that topic. Um, you also have initial posts. Um, that's just for Arvis to reset the post of the car. So do not publish to that topic unless you know what you're doing. Uh, to do, I need to fix that. So that's already done. Um, but you, the the command val topic is when the simulation listens to the keyboard tele app node. Uh, you also don't need to publish to this topic. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, all right. And uh, next, and I'll run. Uh, I'll, I'll run keyboard tally app so we can see how what it looks like in the simulation when you're manually driving it around. So, as part of the simulation, the the package for doing keyboard tally app so should already be installed as part of the uh, simulation container. Um, so basically, you set that uh, variable we we set uh, we talked about before to true. And then after you launch, basically this is the this is the simulation window that we have. And then after you've launched the simulation window, uh, we can do this. Hopefully it's here. Yes. Um, so this is the keyboard tally op node. And um, let me let me show you. It looks like when I bring it up. So basically it will print on the screen how to do it, how to, uh, what, what keys to press to move around. So I, the I, the UIO, JK, UIO, K, uh, M, comma, dot, these are implemented and you can use, for example, can't see, but I'm pressing I right now. Um, and then I pressed K where the car stopped. So what you'll, you have to do is to keep the focus on the terminal. It's basically listening to the keyboard input. Um, so for example, you can back up and then press K, it will stop. And then if you want to go, so J and L are also there, but it just turns the wheel. I don't know if you can see it. But it just turns the wheel slightly. Um, but I is going forward. And then you also have U and O. If you press U, it will go forward to the left. Press O, it will go forward to the right, etc. So that's how you basically run keyboard tally up in, in the simulation. Um, uh, and then the last part is how do you develop your own agent in ROS2? So this is a open source project. So I have instructions for anyone uh, that want to use it, but in the lab manual, I also, uh, let me move this. In the lab manual, I also mentioned uh, basically how, how you should submit, um, how you should have deliverables. Um, I would suggest that unless you, uh, you're really familiar with, um, how the network communications work in Docker Compose or in Docker, I would suggest just developing it, the, your, uh, your own package directly in the simulation container, which is the one that we just brought up. So as you can see, there's already a workspace uh, and where you'll just put your package next to the gym, uh, the, the, simulation, um, the simulation package and then compile it. Um, so what you'll do for convenience is basically, so if you remember the original, if you're using Rocker, for example, the original only had uh, this one mounting uh, directory. And then what you could do is you can add another one, and just point it to wherever your package repo or package directory will be on your host. Um, and then point it towards, let's say a package called safety note inside uh, your uh, the workspace in your container. 
right? If you're do using Docker Compose, no, this is not showing up. Uh, it's, slip, it's split into two lines. So if you're using Docker Compose in the volume field in the sim container, you can basically add another line to tell it to basically mount another directory. Um, okay. Uh, any questions? Is this is this going too fast for you all? Are you not able to keep up uh, with it? Uh, it's it's already it's also getting recorded. So just let us know. Okay. Um, so the lab the lab handout this time is pretty straightforward. I'll go through it. Um, just briefly. So it, it works the same way as last time you go to GitHub Classroom, you basically do the whole process again. Um, and then the first part is that we, we go through all the different types of um, messages that you'll see in ROS that we will we'll be using in this lab. I, I, I think I went through at least the laser scan one, you've seen the what, what fields are in there, the odometry one, uh, and then Ackerman drive stamped Obviously, you've already used it, so you, you should know um, what's inside. And then the comment about what was um, in the message before. So the trick is you just go to, if you know what the uh, package is from, you can just Google it. <laughs> and whatever pops up is the, is the, is the message def definition. Um, but yeah, the, the messages, at least these three, between ROS1 and ROS2, the API is exactly still the same. Um, and the next part just went a little bit into detail on the TTC calculation. We already went over that in the lecture. So this is basically reminding you how, uh, how it's, how it's um, calculated and what you should be careful about. Um, and then this part is basically, uh, more on implementation. So what you'll do is you basically subscribe to your laser scan messages and uh, laser scan topics and odometry topic. So for the odometry, you're grabbing the longitudinal uh, velocity of the vehicle. And for the laser scan, you're getting the angles and the range measurements. Um, and then after that, you can calculate your array of TTCs and then decide what to do with it, um, how you can differentiate a, a, when there's a crash. And then what you'll do is you just set the speed field in the drive that you're publishing to zero um, to break. Um, uh, so basically the way you test this out is you run, basically run the, um, run the sim container with keyboard tele -op, what I've just shown before. Uh, you turn it on and then you drive it basically, the first test is to drive it directly towards a wall and then see if your car will stop in time. So when you publish the speed zero, it will, it will have a little bit of braking distance um, because the dynamics is kind of realistic, at least in uh, when it's doing braking. Um, so it doesn't just stop immediately. So you will coast a little bit. So that you'll have to take into account for your thresholding. Um, and then another test is to uh, drive it down the hallway. I think you saw the saw the hallway here. It's kind of narrow. So if you could drive straight down the, this hallway without any walls in front, without crashing, uh, without stopping, I mean that would be that would be our way of testing. Uh, there are no false negative, uh, false positives. Um, so if you can drive along the walls, fine. Um, that's one of the other tests. Um, again, the three topics that you'll be using. So for submission this time, all you have to do is basically we've provided a uh, a skeleton package here. Um, and you have the Python package, uh, the Python script or C++, there's a very, very basic skeleton. Um, so what you'll do is you will basically develop, develop, take this package and then develop it in the same sim container. Um, and then after you're done, just basically update your repo in, 
with that package you've developed and then just push directly to commit and push directly to the repo GitHub Classroom created for you. Um, and then the next one is we uh, want to make a screencast of running the safety node in the simulation. So basically doing the two tests that I've mentioned, drive it along the, so just record your screen, uh, have the simulation drive along the hallway, not, uh, not crashing and uh, not breaking when traveling straight in the hallway, and then just show the car driving towards a wall and it'll actually break correctly and upload your video to YouTube. Um, you don't have to list it and then just fill it in here. So, oh, whoops. Um, that's it, basically. Any questions? Uh, actually, I have a question. So th uh, this file safety underscore node uh, it has to be uploaded in the SRC along with the um, node that launches the um, the HTML. I mean, uh, the web page where the environment is loaded. Uh, yeah, I would recommend that because it's in the container. There's already a workspace. Um, it was. It's already a ROS two workspace. You can just put your node there and then after you've launched the simulation you could just launch another node um in the same container okay sure thank you um i have a more like this isn't related to lab two but this is more general um mm -hmm. we're working um like uh on vs code or something and editing mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the host system how do we link the um like the libraries that are in docker is because like um when I was trying to find the like the Ackerman include uh, kind of like the the name, it was a, a little difficult. Um, you mean like when you're developing, you want to basically see like, like the like this um, the 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 hints that VS Code could give you when you're basically writing code. Is that what you mean? Yeah, but like um, in Docker, it, like it like the way to link it seems a little different from how you do it normally. Mm. I'm not sure because I, I don't use VS Code myself. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I've never used it before. So if, if anyone has that experience, you could post it in the chat and then, but yeah, I, I haven't used VS Code before, so I don't really know, sorry. All right, no problem, thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. I, I use VS Code. So, so um, you mean you try to link the li uh, link the li so you can edit your uh, your code on the host? Is that what no, you mean? He meant the when you type the the hint when you type like half of a name and then it'll pop up. Are do you want these? And then oh, it will include part. the libraries in inside the Docker containers. I'm not sure how to do that. Yeah, I don't I don't know how to do that. Uh, it was more for, more so for like checking that like I'm using the right like method uh, definitions on like using the right arguments and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, what just happened? Can you still see my screen? Yeah, the recording yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it, basically, it's um, you just click and then drag to do the heading and it will reset the car at that post and when you have two cars this is the one to for resetting the opponent but we don't have one right now so that wouldn't work um in the future uh, i still haven't figured out how to how to best do it yet we might add a, uh, the ability to add obstacles on the fly in here um but not right now um and then basically this is the Arvis window. So what you can do on the right here is change the view. So what you can do is for example, do let's say third person follow and you choose a target frame. Uh, let's say face, whoops, maybe this wouldn't work. Eh, never mind. But it basically changes so that you can follow a frame in uh, in third person. Um, 
That's basically what that does. And on the left here, you, you can have, um, you can basically add components to your visualization. So for example, grid will by default show and then map also in this configuration for our viz, it will show. Um, and then laser scan, you can change the topics, but since you only have one car now, um, this will only be the Eagle scan. Um, robot model is basically like the 3D model of the, the this little blue car we've created. So if you want to add more visualization in Arvis, you could click add. Um, so on the left, you have by display type, uh, you have all these things. If you're interested, uh, we probably could do a tutorial later on um, for some of these, but um, if you're interested, you could look into what these are. Um, and then you can also do by topic. So this basically shows you uh, what's what's being published right now and whether you can uh, visualize them. So it, by default, only shows the it only shows the topics that you can visualize. Um, so for example, odometry. So right now it only has one thing, but if I start driving, it should start making yeah the trail of arrows. So that's visualizing the odometry. Um, what else? And then uh, if you don't want it, you could just remove it and then it will be gone. Um, another thing that you can look at once we've, maybe we can talk, we'll, we'll probably talk about this in the le next lecture. It's the TF tree, basically the frame that's being maintained in, in ROS. So you can see in the simulation, there's a lot more because there's a 3D model of the car. Um, then it shows you all the um, all the frames that is available for you and where where they are. Uh, the names are all overlap, but so that's what TF does. Um, yeah, so that's basically on how to what, what the what the simulation does, and then. This interface is basically left click, you do the orbit, and then right click is zooming in, and then um, middle click, middle mouse click is panning. Oh, it's down here. Yeah, that's it.